So number three from the 2011 higher. Now we'll look at here. There's a sequence defined by this relation here. It's a reconciliation, but it's only got the multiplying part of it. An initial term, you know it. Write down the values of u1 and u2. Well, that should be straightforward, because what this reconciliation lets you do is work out the following value to the one you know. So u1 would simply be negative a half times u0, the previous one, which is negative 16, which means that u1 is going to be 8. And similarly, u2 will still be negative a half times the previous one, which is now 8. So that will be negative 4. Whoops. U2. See, there it is. That was nice and easy to start with, but it was only one mark. And part B, a second sequence is given by 4, 5, 7, 11, and so on. Oop, naughty, four dots, should only be three dots, an ellipsis, is generated by this reconciliation. This time it's got both parts to it. It's got the multiplying factor and the added number. And it tells you that V1 is 4. Find the values of P and Q. Well, that should be simultaneous equations then, because there's two unknowns. I need two equations and two unknowns, and there's several I can make up. Because 5 came from 4, there's one equation, 7 came from 5, 11 came from 7, so I'll just take the first pair. So that means that I had V2 is 5, V1 is 4, which will give me this relation then. That means that P times 4 plus Q gave me 5, but I'll write it the other way around though. So taking V1, multiplying it by P, I'll write it that way around, 4P, adding on Q gives me the following term, 5, there you are, there's one equation. Similarly, V3 is 7 and V2 is 5. Well, that means if I put 5 into it, 5 times the P plus the Q should give me the following term, 7. So there's equation 2. <coughs> and they're ready to go. Simply subtracting them, we'll get rid of Q. I think I'll put it down this way just then. So I'm going to write 2 take away 1 just to avoid negatives. So bottom take away the top. That means I've got a single P. Q's go, 7 take away 5 is 2, straight away there's your answer. I know that P equals 2. To find Q, put it into either of them, just use number 1. So I'll just say, substitute P equals 2 in 1, in which case I'll have 4 times 2, plus the Q, should give me 5. Well, 4 2's are 8, take that away, that means Q is going to be 5, take away the 8, is negative 3. So there's my pair of numbers, I'll put them neatly over here. P equals 2, Q equals negative 3. I'll give that a wee underline as well there. Part C. Either the sequence in A, that's the U, or the sequence in B has a limit. Calculate this limit, and secondly, why does the other sequence not have a limit? Well, that's easy to answer straight away. This first one does have a limit because the multiplying factor, negative a half, is a proper fraction. So it's between 1 and negative 1. The sequence V does not have a limit because the multiplying factor 2 is greater than 1. U has a limit, may as well call it L here, as the factor negative a half lies between negative 1 and 1. And to find that limit, you can either use that formula, b over 1 minus a, where b is the added number, which would be 0, but we know it, b is 0, and a is the factor, which is negative a half. So you've got 0 over 1 take away negative a half. And it doesn't matter what the denominator comes to, because if the numerator is 0, then the whole fraction comes to 0. So the limit would be 0. You could either do it that way, or you could say, well, if the limit is L, that means if you put L in to the formula, the answer that comes out should also be L. So you could write it down this way. If you put L into it and multiply it by negative a half, and there wasn't anything been added, the answer should be L, taking that over the other side, 1 plus the half is 3 upon 2. 3 upon 2 L is 0, which means L would just have to be 0. So that's the same answer. And for part 2, that was actually part 1 there, part 2 said, why does the other sequence not have a limit? V does not have a limit, as the multiplying factor 2 is greater than 1. 